And today we have our, our, our spe- he's a family. He's not just a friend. He's not a guest. He's really family to this house. He's come many, many years to bless the house here, to bless our team. And you know, he's here today again. And as soon as we asked him, he was ready. God gave him a word for our house today. And I'm ready to receive. So by show of hands, how many are ready to receive a word from God today? If you're ready, I want you to give a big Way World Outreach welcome to Prophet Rob Santos. Come on, let's hear it for our family, our friend, our brother. Well, praise the Lord, Way World Outreach. It's an honor and a privilege to be here in the house of the Lord with each and every one of you. The Spirit of God is still just descending. Properly said, He's ascending. We like to say things in reverse because it makes sense to our vernacular. Like we say, like, we're going to usher in the presence of God. But if He's omnipresent, He's here. So how are we ushering in the person that's already here? The truth is, when we worship we begin to remove the veil and he becomes known. So I want you to know (laughs) that he's already here. Before I take off and minister, I want to give honor to where honor is due. And so I honor the set man and woman of God for their 20 years of commitment. Where one day they said yes to God And they have continually for 20 years have simply walked according to that three little letter word. Yes, God. Through thick, through thin, through good, through challenging, they have never lost their commitment. And this is the fruit that's visible. Do you realize that the way world outreach, because of a man's yes, is impacting city, states, nations, schools, prisons, <laughs> tribes, and tongues of every race. God is using the Wayworld Outreach to change and transform the world. So I honor Pastor Marco, his bride, his leadership staff, without a people buying into the vision, this world-changing ministry would not be possible. And so I want to say thank you to all the staff for your kindness, for your love, but most of all, the spirit of excellence that's here. I honor each and every one of you. Why don't you go ahead and take your seat. Father, I pray that the word that you dropped in my spirit, that would manifest and bring forth life to every man and woman of God here. I thank you that the word of the Lord in my mouth is not by happenstance or accident, but it's by the work and the leading of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, for the victory that will come and the advantage that you have given us through the work of your Holy Spirit. And everybody in the house said, well, well, the way world outreach, God has given me a title, and the title of what I'm going to minister to you is this. The advantage is with you. Can I simply proclaim to you That God wants you to know that you're not sometimes or occasionally in the advantage. If you have Christ in you and the Holy Spirit dwells, can I tell you that you are always on the right side of the scenario. Though it may look bad, it won't end bad. Can I proclaim to you, you may have been dealt the wrong cards, but... The Holy Spirit will turn the card on the river that will cause you to suddenly be favored. You might find yourself in a difficult place, but my Bible teaches me in Romans chapter 8 verse 28 that all things work together for the good for those who love God and called according to his purpose. Can I tell you that the odds may be stacked against you, but the Lord will turn it because you don't need many, you need him, and he'll bring about your victory. Can I remind 
remind you that the scale may be seemingly unbalanced. Life might seem unfair, but suddenly when the Spirit of God descends upon a scenario, it all works in your favor. I want to remind you that we have been told some things about the Holy Spirit that I want to begin to destroy. We have often heard the Holy Spirit is a gentleman and he'll never give you more than you can bear or handle or he will never he will never cause you to do something you won't want to do or don't want to do but I began to read through my Bible and I came across the name and the book of Jonah when you study the name Jonah you will find out that his name means dove when you see the dove it is a type and a shadow of the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit's not only found in the New Testament being poured out upon all flesh the Holy Testament is part of the triune God and can I tell you that he was before we ever were and I want to remind you that he's dwelling so when Jonah's name means spirit he had a father whose name is Amnitai when you study the name Amnitai from Hebrew you will find out that his name means truth if Jonah his name means dove, which is a picture of spirit, and his father's name is truth. It brings me to a revelation. Wherever their spirit and truth dwells, there is liberty. When spirit and truth meet together on a corner, it's called the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to declare to each and every one of you that the Spirit of God is here and he's dwelling amongst you. When we begin to look at the story of Jonah, God rose up and said to him, Jonah, arise and go to the great city of Nineveh, of Nineveh and preach. And so what does Jonah do? He hears what God says, but he don't feel like it. Can I tell you today, how many of you have ever been in a place where you felt God asking you to do something, but you don't feel like it? You might say no for a time, but the Spirit of God, by the work of the Holy Spirit, begins to stir inside of you. You said, no, I don't want to, but suddenly God says, I need. And suddenly you can fight it just like Jonah did. And Jonah ran down to Tarsus, but he didn't just run down to to Tarsus. He ran down to a ship, paid the fare, and goes down to the bottom of the ship. Can I tell you that when Jonah boards this ship in this ship set sail, it began to cause havoc in an atmosphere. Why? Because the Holy Spirit will not be denied. The Holy Spirit will have his way. He might have to send a wind of opposition, but that wind has a purpose. And so when Jonah gets in this mariner's ship that's carrying goods of all kinds, going to trade in different lands, people's valuables, people's assets, things of great possession. When they set sail, then suddenly out of nowhere, a great wind tempest rises up. The wind begins to beat against the boat. The mariners become fearful and afraid. They don't know what to do. So what do they begin to do? They begin to take the goods of others and cast them overboard. Can I tell you that one man being disobedient will cost somebody else something of value? But can I tell you that the Spirit of God is still at work. I want to let you know it may look bad for a time, but in its end, it will be good. We see something happening. These mariners who have faced many storms before are overwhelmed, and one of the mariners goes down to the bottom of a ship, and there he is, Jonah, whose name means spirit. He's asleep. He wakes him up, and he tells him, call on the name of your God, for we are in a, t uh, a tempest that's going to cost us our lives. And Jonah said, if you you want this windstorm to end, if you want this thing to be over, take me and throw me overboard. Can I tell you, Jonah had a revelation that he knew he was the cause of the storm. How did he have that revelation? Because the Spirit of Christ was dwelling within him. But in the midst of this, the mariners still fought on. And what did they do? They cast lots, and when the lot finally fell on Jonah, they said, may the blood be on your hands. They take Jonah, and they toss him off. When Jonah lands in into the water. God provides a ride in the form of a great fish. He's swallowed up and he's three days in the belly of a, of a great fish. And what does that fish do? On the third day when Jonah had prayed and repented, that fish spit him up on the shoreline. And can I tell you what the Spirit of God said to Jonah? Go to the great city of Nineveh. Can I tell you where Jonah's feet ended up? At the great city of Nineveh. Can I tell you you've been told the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. But can I tell you something great? 
greater. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of persuasion. You can say no for a time, but suddenly when God wants to have his will in his way, you will be persuaded. How many of you know not one of you got saved on the best day of your life, but the spirit of God through the work of the Holy Spirit was making intercession for you. You felt the tug. You knew what to do, and you said no. How many of you remember the prodigal son? The prodigal son went and joined himself to a foreigner, to a man that was a stranger in the field. And one day when the severe famine rose and there was no more finances in his hands, he joined himself to this citizen who sent him into the field and would give him nothing. When that famine rose and he had nothing left, he knew where he needed to go. The spirit was pulling him. The spirit was leading him. But he simply overrode it and said what? No. But now that he is in the midst of the pig mire, now that he's in the, the pig uh, the pig mess, guess what happens? He begins to have a revelation by the Spirit of God, and he rises up and says, I've sinned against my Father in heaven, and I've sinned against uh, the my Father in the earth. I must arise and what? Go home. Can I tell you, he was under the persuasion of the Holy Spirit. He went out and did his thing for a time, but in the end, the Spirit had as it desired. We see that the Holy Spirit comes because it is your advantage. The Holy Spirit comes to grant to you the needed favor in the midst of despair. The Holy Spirit comes to you because it wants to place you in a superior position. Can I tell you that the odds may stack against you. Negative things may be happening to you, but it doesn't mean it's over. It means when the Spirit of God dwells inside of you, it will grant to you an opportunity to put you in a more favorable position. I'm here to remind you that the Spirit of God doesn't come and go. It resides. It's not a something. It's a someone and he lives on the inside of you. When you get that feeling like, ah, something needs to change. That's not you. That's the Spirit of God. When you get that feeling and going, ah, I don't like the way this feels. I'm discerning. That ain't you. That's the power of the persuasion of the Holy Spirit that's looking to bring you into your land of victory. Is anyone here ready for a radical change? Anybody here for a radical shift? Anybody here ready to find the season of divine favor and come into the place of your breakthrough? If I'm talking to you, Way World Outreach, somebody say, oh yeah. yeah. And so we see that there is a man by the name of David in 1 Samuel chapter 30, David came to an unfavorable situation. He comes to a city called Ziglag. And when you study Ziglag from the Hebrew, it's the word that means to be crushed. Anybody ever go through a difficult time and you think, God, why is this crushing taking place in my life? Can I tell you that God doesn't crush you to destroy you? The crushing that comes simply comes to build capacity. Every hardship, every difficulty that you're in and you wonder, God, where are you? His spirit is there. Have you ever ever said, God, how come I feel forsaken? I feel lost. I feel out of control. I can't see clearly. Just because you can't see him, just because you can't feel him, doesn't mean he's not there. But when he makes himself known, suddenly your disadvantage, your season of unfavor will turn to a season of favor. Your unlike will become your full of love. Your place of hardship will become the greatest place called the gateway into the heavens, and you will see the Lord of your breakthrough. David comes to the city of Ziglag his wives, his children, and all of his possessions have been taken. His city has been burned with fire. Everything looks bad, bad, and worse. But can I tell you that it didn't get worse until David's men, who were once for him, became so depressed. They became angered, and they said these words, we're going to stone David. David suffered the same loss that these men did, but what does David do? He handles himself differently. He cries out to the priest and says, bring me the linen ephod. When you study the word ephod from the Hebrew, you'll find out it means the image of God. When you study the word image from the Greek, you'll find out that it means icon. An icon is a man that has been lifted up. Can I tell you that when you begin to worship the icon, when you begin to worship the Lord, the King of kings, the sovereign one, when you begin to worship, suddenly the windows of heaven will open and you will have a revelation. David put on the image and began to worship the Lord and he cried, 
out, Lord, shall I pursue? Lord, shall I overtake my enemy? And the Lord speaks to him by the voice of the Holy Spirit. David, pursue, overtake, and without fail, recover all. I'm here to make an announcement to the Way World Outreach. This is your season where God will use you to recover San Bernardino and the surrounding areas. He'll use you to put your foot into these lands and mark it as a place owned by God. He's going to use you to be a word against the adversary, pull down strongholds and awaken glory and give men and women that have been lost without the Spirit. He's going to put the Spirit in them and give them direction. He's going to point their way. He's going to turn it around. He's going to bring it out of the difficult place into a glorious realm. Who here is ready to come into a place of victory by the way of the Holy Spirit? I've come to realize that the Holy Spirit will lead you into victory. He'll deliver you from pending troubles and he'll give you the power to keep moving forward because his purpose is to bring you into a state where you discover the victorious one that lives inside of you. See, at many times things may look difficult, but the truth is if you trust the Holy Spirit, he'll turn it around because everything is at your advantage. See, in the in the Old Testament, he is called the Spirit of God. In the New Testament, we call him the Holy Spirit. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible teaches us that God created the heavens and the earth. It was without form, and it was void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Bible says, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Can I tell you what the Spirit of God is? It's the Holy Spirit. He's the one that hovers. The word to hover means to give birth. Can I tell you that there was a day where God was knocking on your heart and you said not today but the spirit of God was making intercession and he was giving birth to something that you didn't see you said no he said yes and he kept on you can I tell you no man gets saved on their best day you're usually on the worst day in a time of trouble and then you call on the name of the Lord and the Holy Spirit is there he'll swoop you up turn you around set your feet upon the rock and establish your way can I tell you he is the way the truth and the life the spirit of God will come upon you in the form of the Holy Spirit to lead you into the land of victory I don't care what trouble hardship difficulty I don't care if you're the black sheep the brown sheep you're for forgotten sheep the ugly sheep I don't care what you think you are can I tell you what you are you are his and can I tell you if you are his you are the advantage I want to bring you out of despair and sorrow and your trouble and let you know the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of you by the receiving of Christ Jesus in your life and now you are a man or a woman that has the advantage. If you believe the advantage lives, dwells, and has his being on the inside of you, give him a shout of praise. The Holy Spirit is your advantage. When you study the word advantage, it means he's the one that will put you in a, in a superior position in the midst of your havoc. Can I tell you a little story of a man by the name of Samson? When you begin to look at the man by the name of Samson, we understand that he was a Nazarite dedicated to God. We know that he was never to cut his hair. We know that he was never to drink intoxicating drinks. We knew that he wasn't supposed to touch unclean things. And he was supposed to live a life that was holy. But we know that these four Nazarite vows, they were all what? Broken. When we look at Samson, if we look at him, we will see a man of moral failure, spiritual failure, a man that, that did everything wrong. He's relatable. But can I tell you today, if you look at Samson, you'll see the things in which a man failed. But if you understand the name Samson means sunlight, but the definition of his name means window. A window is not something that we look at. A window is something we look through. And so I want you to begin to change your perspective when you read the book of Samuel or when you read about uh, Samson in the book of Judges. When you look at him, you'll see a man of mistakes. He will be relatable to you. But if you look through the window and you would look through him, you would begin to discover the power of the Spirit of God that came upon him. We know that Samson, he comes to a place where he's, he's defiled by a woman by the name of Delilah. She tells him a lie. She calls 
goes for the uh, soldiers and they shave his head and now he is bald. He's taken into captivity and now he is bound to a post and they pluck out his two eyes. Can I tell you in that moment, Samson lost sight, but it doesn't mean he's lost vision. Some of you may not be able to see, but the Holy Spirit will come upon you and he will give you vision. Sight lets you see what's before you, but vision lets you see what's around the corner. Sight will let you see the mountain, but vision will let you see from the top of it. Can I tell you today, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. He comes to change the scenario and give you the ability to comprehend what you couldn't comprehend previously. So here we see this man, Samson. He's taken into captivity and he's made a grinder in the prison. This man's life is now walking in circle after circle. He is in a cycle and nothing is working favorable. But one day the Philistine lords are drunk. One day they begin to cry out a foolish decree. They said, go bring Samson, the one who used to multiply our dead. Bring him before us that we might make mockery of him. Can I tell you that when Samson was busy walking in circles doing the work of the oxen, God was on the move by the work of the Holy Spirit. Do you know that Samson was doing the job of an ox, but at his feet he was grinding grain. But the question becomes, what kind of grain is he grinding? He's grinding wheat, scholars believe. Wheat makes flour. Flour makes bread. We understand that Jesus said, I am the bread that came from heaven. So according to typology, when Samson's working, walking in circles, in a cycle of despair and hardship in his life, the Spirit of God is working, and at his feet is the Word of God. Where the Word is, so is the Spirit. Then suddenly there was a young lad that was sent to Samson, and when the lad came and grabbed his hand, he led him. All scholars believed that that young man was nothing more than a picture of the Holy Spirit. He wasn't leading Samson to slaughter. He was leading Samson to victory. Samson said to the young man, lead me to the innermost part of the temple where the, where the, where the pillars hold the temple up. And the young man led him right there. My question is, how did Samson know where to go? It's because the Holy Spirit was working. When you got, when you got the word in you, the Spirit of God is working on you. You may not understand that the word will perfect you. The word will change you. The word will transform you. Can I tell you all you now need is the leading of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit will lead you to the place of transformation. Samson comes and he is now positioned right before the pillars. The Bible says he takes his left hand and places it on one and is right on the other. And before he pushes, he says a, a simplistic prayer. Can I tell you that most of the time, people don't call on the name of the God because they feel like he's too far. Samson did 14 mighty acts in scripture, but only one time did he call on the name of the Lord, and it's right here. He felt abandoned, forsaken. He felt lost and destitute. And he begins to cry out the most simplistic powerful prayer you will ever hear and it's simply these words Lord remember me I pray the word remember means re means do again member means attach Samson began to cry out and say reattach me to the kingdom can I proclaim to you that's the work of the spirit of God that's the work of the Holy Spirit to bring you into the advantage that you're no longer one without sight but you have a greater vision one that's not without purpose but you have a kingdom destiny to fulfill. Samson recognized, I may have lost my sight, but I'm not going to lose my kingdom purpose. And he began to cry out, and the Spirit of God empowered him by the work of the Holy Spirit. And the last thing we see is Samson pushing with all of his might. Remember, Samson's name means sunlight. His name means window. So when you read the story of Samson, you're not looking at him, you're looking through him. And the Bible says in Samson, push with all of his might. He becomes the image in the New Testament of Jesus hanging on Calvary's cross. Samson's end was just like Jesus. As a man stretched out, the weight of sin crushed Samson at Dagon's temple. When you study the name Dagon, you will find out that it means the God of fertility, the God of all flesh. Can I tell you today that Samson died under the spirit of the world, the spirit of the flesh. It crushed him, but in his death, he did more than in his life. Can I tell you? 
that Jesus' life, he affected the masses and the multitude, trained up 12 that turned the world upside down. But now in his death, hundreds of millions of people all over the world, if not billions, have been saved. He's doing a work that cannot be denied by the power of the Holy Spirit. Can I say to you that the Spirit of God is in you? Rise up, do the work, conquer the land, and use the gift that God has called you to be for the glory of the kingdom. Come on, if you believe it, say yes. See, Samson could be seen as a man of sin, or he could be a, a, a window into the future of what God is doing by the work of the Holy Spirit. So you've been saying, Prophet Rob, that the Spirit of God is my advantage, but prove it to me. The Bible says in the book of John, the 16th chapter, in verse number 7, he's speaking to his disciples and he says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper... Can I tell you the helper is the Holy Spirit? He'll come to you. But if I depart, I'll send him to you. Can I tell you that when the, when the Spirit of God in the form of Christ left, he promised to send the helper. And he says the helper is for your what? Advantage. Can I tell you that when things look bad, all you got to do is remember the helper. And the helper comes to be your what? Advantage. He's the one that tips the scale in your favor. He's the one that turns your impossible around. He's the one that brings victory where there should be defeat. He's the one that gave David. David, the power to pursue, overtake, and recover all without fail. He's the one that makes a way where there is no way. I'm talking to you about the power of the Holy Spirit. You are never in the disadvantage. He's always with you. He's always for you. And he turns all things around. When we look at the story of Joseph, he had a dream. And one day, he was sent to the field to bring a report on his brothers. And when he gets there, guess what happens? His brother said, look now, here comes the dreamer. Let's see what becomes of his dreams. Well, just before then, Joseph was on a journey. He comes to the place where they should have been, and they're not there. Can I tell you what happened? There is a strange man that is standing there, and he simply says, your brethren said they're going to Dothan, and he began to point the way. Can I tell you that, that David, or excuse me, that Joseph didn't know that the way that the Lord was sending him through the work of the Holy Spirit in a strange man was going to cause his life to be in danger. It made it look like his fulfillment of the call of God on his life was going to be impossible. But when he comes, can I tell you what he does? He defies the pit. And his brothers, what do they do? They sell him into slavery. The Ishmaelite traders buy him. They bring him to Egypt. And there is a man by the name of Potiphar that looks upon Joseph and says, he's not an ordinary slave. He puts him to do the job of a slave but recognizes this man has an advantage. This man can carry something different. This man has a different spirit upon him. Just like Caleb. Just like Joshua. When you have the Holy Spirit, you're set apart. When you recognize the Spirit of God is your advantage, you don't quit. You rise up. When you understand the Holy Spirit is inside of you, you don't look with the eyes of negativity. You look with the eyes of the miraculous that's about to manifest because of the goodness of God that dwells on the inside of me. Anybody here have the goodness of God? dwelling on the inside of you. That is called the Holy Spirit. If you have him, say, oh, yeah. And so Joseph, he's meant to be a slave, but he becomes what? A master in Potiphar's house. Everywhere Joseph went, what happened? He demonstrated the Spirit of God in him, and he had the advantage until he became the father to Pharaoh, and he became the overseer of a nation. See, can I tell you, Isaiah 46 and 10 rings out over this house. It says, God has declared your end from the beginning. Can I tell you that you have an expected end, way world outreach in every person here? Can I tell you what your expected end is? It's victory over your hardship. It's victory over over the impossible. You have the power to overcome death, hell, and the grave by the power of the Spirit of Christ that dwells on the inside of you. He's changing things on your behalf, bringing you into your most favorable season. If you believe it, say, oh yeah. So in the book of Acts, there's many examples of the Spirit of God. We understand that in the 
New Testament, the Spirit of God was poured out upon all flesh. That's why when you're even in the ways of the world, there are some times that you feel like, I shouldn't go to this party. You feel like I shouldn't go out tonight. You sense that there's some type of havoc or pending danger. And if you obey it, guess what? You get spared. But the day that you deny it, you'll find yourself in cuffs. You'll find yourself in an accident. You'll have found yourself in a difficult place. And you're like, God, I knew better. How many of you have ever found yourself in a land of trouble when you felt that thing on the inside of you telling you to do something different and you ignored it? Can I tell you, you can't ignore the Holy Spirit forever. The Holy Spirit will make himself promise. He's persuasive and he'll bring you to the knowledge of the truth that will bring forth a radical transformation. And so in the book of Acts, the 28th chapter, we can look at a man by the name of the Apostle Paul. We understand in the book of Corinthians that Paul talks about all his various troubles, trials, and tribulations that he goes through. We understand that Paul was beaten five different occasions with 39 lashes. Forty would put you to death. They brought him on the brink of death, but the Holy Spirit in him kept him alive. We understand that Paul was beaten different times with what? With batons, but yet he overcame every beating. We know that he was stoned to death, but what did he do? He rose up out of the rock pile. How did he do such great feats? It was because the Spirit of God was on the inside of him. The Spirit of God was moving. We understand that he was attacked by many robbers and he experienced and encountered many strange things. But in Acts chapter 28, there's a story where he is set sail when he's telling the the Roman soldiers, we should not sail. This is not going to end good. It's going to end in a crash and it's going to be ugly. But because he's a prisoner, he has no voice amongst them. But guess what they do? They set sail. And when they get near the island of Malta, they're facing a storm that they don't know how to handle. And Paul begins to tell them what the Holy Spirit is saying. He said, we need to run this ship ashore. And guess what they do? They do as he says. And Paul says, no man will lose his life, but we need to jump overboard. The ship wrecks and they swim for their life in freezing cold rain. And they pull up on the shoreline. And suddenly what happens? The natives begin to show them unusual kindness, building a fire that they might warm themselves. But here is Paul, shipwrecked, swimming through freezing cold rain. He's a prisoner. And now he says, I'm not here to be served. I'm here to serve others. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Never losing focus on the job that God has assigned him. Never losing sight of the purpose that he was there on that island to make a difference. When you study the name Malta, you will find out that it means honey. Honey means sweet things or beautiful. But when's the last time you called a shipwreck something wonderful? When's the last time you called your storm something beautiful? That's why the Apostle Paul says crazy things like count it all joy as you go through various trials, troubles, and tribulations. Why? Because he had a revelation with him that the Holy Spirit didn't come and go. The Holy Spirit abided. He had a revelation that the Spirit of God was with him even in the midst of his hardship. And so he refused to be downcast. And now Paul is what? Working, showing love to these Barbarians, these natives, and what happens? A viper reaches out, latches on his hands. These men said, surely this man's not a just man. Though he escaped the sea, justice will not allow him to live. He's surely going to swell up and die. The Bible says that they waited a long time. Meaning the viper just didn't bite and let go. It held on. And can I tell you what Paul did after a little while? When everybody's looking at him, expecting him to swell up and die, he begins to shake his hand under the work of the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you what happens? The viper falls off and it falls into a consuming fire. Can I tell you that the Holy Spirit is a consuming fire? The Holy Spirit in you is a fire to live through the thing that was sent to destroy you. The Holy Spirit will keep you and it will move you and it will cause you to persevere through every adversity, every hardship, and every difficulty you face that you will rise and be victorious. If you've been going through it, I got good news. You're going to make it to the other side. If that excites you, Wayworld Outreach, say yes. So Paul shakes it off. 
And soon after the door, an opportunity is made available to him. And he goes to the highest ranking official by the name of Cubulus who had a father that was sick with dysentery and on the verge of death. And can I tell you what Paul does? The very hand that was envenomated, the very thing that was bitten, the very thing that shook the creature off, the very thing that was poisoned with venom, what did he do? He took it and God turned around that which was meant for his evil, used it and worked it for his good. The same hand that was bitten was the same hand that was laid on Cubulus' father and when that hand was laid and the word was prayed, can I tell you what happened? That sick man's body was healed. Can I proclaim to you revival broke out in the island. Paul went there as a prisoner but now he's a revivalist on the island of Malta. He he went there in chains in captivity, but now he's demonstrating the power of the Holy Spirit. He's at the advantage. I don't know about you, but I want the Spirit to work in, by, and through me. I want to recognize every advantage that I have. I want you to know that you will be victorious no matter the scenario, the darkness, the hardship, or the difficulty that you face. If you're ready to see it turn around, say, come Holy Spirit. Let me get ready to end it right here. Can I tell you that Paul, because of the work of the Holy Spirit, found favor. When Paul finished ministering revival for two days, it was time for him to depart. But they lost their ship. They had no provision, no food. And they had no more money. And so what does Paul do? He simply begins to share with them the vision of God. And the Bible says in Acts 28 and 10, and they honored us in many ways. And when we departed, they provided us with things that were needed and necessary. When you study that word, re honored, it means regarded with great respect. They landed on an island called Malta, and they had suffered many losses. But when the Holy Spirit demonstrated the power and they recognized the Holy Spirit in Paul was amongst them, can I tell you what happened? They looked upon them and they favored him. The weight of loss was shifted into the weight of provision. And now they were provided with the things that were necessary. How are you going to get from an island to, a, to another nation? They were going to Rome. How are they going to get there? They need a boat. Can I tell you they didn't give the boat to the Roman soldiers. They gave the boat to Apostle Paul. Paul started as a what? As a slave. But now he's leaving as a boat owner. Paul started as a prisoner, but now he's the captain of the boat. Can I tell you today that God divine favor, when the Holy Spirit is vantage comes upon you, it may look bad, it may look ugly, it may feel wrong, but by the time it's done, it'll all be worked out on your behalf. Can I tell you today, God's about to shift it in your favor because the Holy Spirit is the way world outreach advantage to touch the city and change a community, touch nations for the glory of God. If you believe it, say yes. Here it is. At the very end, we see something powerful happen. We see that Paul set sail. And when he arrived, in Acts 6, 28, 16, it says, and when he arrived in Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with a soldier guarding him. Can I tell you that when Paul gets to Rome, he's not a what? A prisoner anymore. He's not locked up. He has his own house. He has all that he needs, and the guy that's watching him is not necessarily watching him. He's walking with him because they knew that the Spirit of God inside of Paul was so powerful that they could not stop him. So they just simply chose to walk with him. I don't know about you, but if somebody walks with me long enough, they're going to be converted. Somebody walk with you long enough, they're going to be changed and transformed. Why? Because you have the Spirit of God living on the inside of you. Can I tell you what that means? 
means that he will always put you in a superior position. He will always cause things to work out in your favor. You're the head and never the tail. You're on top and rising. There, You cannot be defeated when you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. David's men spoke of stoning him, but at the end, he has a speech with them, and they all rose up and rallied with him. Can I tell you that Joseph was thrown into a pit, then he was thrown into a prison. He was forgotten, but then when he was remembered, he became a ruler over. Can I tell you today that the Holy Spirit is going to fulfill every promise that God has given you. You are never the disqualified, the disadvantaged. You are no longer the less. You're always the greater than because the Spirit of God dwells, lives, and has His being on the inside of you. If you believe that you have the advantage, why don't you stand on your feet and give Him a shout of praise? To summarize what I declare today over the Way World Outreach is that you're the advantaged. It doesn't matter if you feel like you're the black sheep. It doesn't matter if you feel like I'm the lesser, the forgotten, the forsaken. It doesn't matter if you feel like I have no voice and no one listens to me. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, it all shifts. He is the boldness that will come upon you. He is the strength that will stand within you. He is the courage that will manifest and make you go forward though you don't want to. He is the truth that won't let you buy into a lie. He is, he is the one that comes upon you or lives from the inside out of you that brings you into the knowledge of everything that God has already done. If you look to the story of Noah, we see that Noah built an ark, floor, door, and what? Window. The floor is God, the door is Christ, the window is who? The Holy Spirit. Can I tell you that when the window or the Holy Spirit comes out, he will always fly to a future place. When we see that Noah released the dove from the window, the dove flew out on the first time, and it went and it what? Came back. But the raven left and never came back. Why? Because it feasted on dead and decaying things. But the dove doesn't rest in chaos nor despair or sorrow. So Noah takes her back in. Seven days later, he sends her out. And now it lands on what? An olive branch. Can I tell you, it brings an olive branch back in its mouth. And Noah understood that what? The water was receding. Seven days later, the, the dove, the Holy Spirit flies out, but it never comes back. But the truth of the matter is, the Old Testament is the thread to the New Testament. If you could look through the window of Samson and see Christ, then that means you have to be able to look through the book of Genesis and see Christ as well. Can I tell you, I see Christ when the dove was released the third time. It's the thread of the Bible. She flies out of the Old Testament, but the question becomes, where does she go? I'll tell you, you'll find her in the book of Matthew in chapter 3. When Jesus is being baptized by John, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. When John comes to the agreement that he's supposed to baptize Christ, he puts him under the water. And when he comes up, immediately the what? The windows of heaven open. And when, when it opens, what happens? A light shines, a voice speaks, and a dove descends. Can I tell you that the dove that brought back the altar olive branch the second time when it was released the third time landed on the true olive branch in the New Testament meaning the windows of heaven from Genesis to Revelation are open meaning that the Holy Spirit has been at work since the beginning of all time and when you discover him he will bring you into the knowledge of the power of your baptism when you understand that you've been baptized not only in water but with fire and presence you have the power to see things transform if you believe a transformation Transforming power is here. Give him a shout of praise. <laughs> Maybe you're the one today that says, I need a first touch of the Holy Ghost. Maybe you're one that's not saved, 
But when you heard this message and you're like, God, I have been disadvantaged. I have felt that tug. I have heard that voice. But I've, I didn't realize that that was the Spirit of God trying to lead me to a greater truth. But now that I heard that, I want it. If that's you, I want to ask you to get out of your seats and come to the altar. If that's you, I want to ask you right now, begin to respond to the tugging of the Holy Spirit. Let him pull you. Let him woo you. Let him lead you to the place of your victory. If you feel like I've been the disadvantaged, if you feel like nothing ever turns in my favor, well, that's a lie. I want you to come to the front because we want to pray a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit upon you. Now with this revelation, you are armed and dangerous. You'll have the power to overcome. For wherever you are, come. If you need a touch, if you need a healing, if you need deliverance, come. The Holy Spirit is here. He will pour out. He will touch. He will transform. This is your moment. Don't stand and watch. Respond. Step up and come into an atmosphere where life-changing things take place. Hallelujah. Have your way. Call them Holy Spirit. Call them Holy Spirit. Draw them from the north, the south, the east, and the west. If you know your family is in hardship and difficulty, but you need your family to be radically touched and transformed, come stand in the gap. Let the Holy Spirit be who he is, your chief intercessor making prayer a petition, bringing salvation and healing. Right here, right now, miracles, signs, and wonders. It's about to take place. It's because we're trusting, not in our works, but we're trusting in the power of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. This young lady right here, can I share with you what God just told me? He said, I come to empower you with hope. And he says, I come to restore your losses. Over the last two and a half years, you have suffered loss after loss. You put a smile on your face, but you're broken in heart. You are desperate and you are saying, God, I need change. He says, you've been feeling it. You've been feeling the tugging, the leading of my spirit. But there has been times where you said, well, I want to fit in. The Lord says the greatest place to fit in is in my presence. He said, in my presence, there's fullness of joy. Joy. I come to heal your mind and set your heart at liberty and I give you the power to walk in faith and in love and obedience to the leading of my spirit. He says you are not the disadvantage but you are the favored. He said this is the season where you're going to get the things that were taken from you. You're going to get them back. You have suffered loss over the last two years. Not just of people but of finances, relationships and God says trust me. I'm the restorer of not some things but all things. I will restore your house. I will restore love and I'll restore you to the spirit of victory. This is a brand new day says the spirit of God. Come on if you believe it say yes. Hallelujah. Oh, there you is. I listened to you sing in the first service and the Lord told me I had a word for the lady in blue and white. What's your name? Oh Marlene we're cousins because your last name is Sanchez. You know what your last name means? It means sanctified. It comes from Latin from a root word. Everyone's going to laugh because it comes from the, from the uh, Spaniard root that means Sancho. Sancho is taking on a negative term that means one on the side. But it's the root that means sanctified for purpose. I heard the Spirit of God say, I am your Sancho. I have sanctified you for a purpose. And my purpose is to win your family. I will lead them out of despair. I will sanctify your sons, your daughters and your grandchildren. I will bring them out of sorrow and out of the dark things where the street called their name. I call them out and I bring them unto the house of the Lord. They will become a group of worshipers, dancers, and they will become, some will even become singers. I will bring a radical sound of salvation for the trumpet is sounded. Sanctification over your household. It has been released this day. Come on, if you believe it, say yes. Yes! He's here. Just put your hands up. Just put your hands up. I want to prophesy to you. 
every man, every woman here, what the Spirit of God is saying. He said, the spirit of victory has come to this house. And from this day, the volume of the house will be loud. He said, I'm pumping up the volume. And there will be a sound of celebration. And with celebration, it's the sign of breakthrough. The Lord says 2025 for this house will be a year of supernatural provision. From this day forward, moving ahead, the Lord says, can you put on the screen Leviticus chapter 26, 9 and 10 on the NIV version. This is the word of the Lord to this house. This is what God is saying over each and every one of you that will grab hold of it by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 9 and 10. If we can have that on the screen because I want you to grab hold of this word. As they're working on that, I want to declare over you that this is going to be the year of favor and supernatural abundance. 2025 is going to be a jubilee year. And you're going to see God's expectant glory come upon this house. You're going to see and know the goodness of God like never before. If somebody has a cell phone, can you open it to Leviticus chapter 26, verse 9 and 10. Somebody took my phone. Hallelujah. They took it when they moved the pulpit. So... I can't, I, I don't want to quote it wrong. If you have it, hold it up and I'll just read it. Leviticus chapter 26. Thank you. Listen to the word of the Lord. It says, I will make this country a place of peace. You will be able to go and sleep with, at night without fear. I will get rid of the wild beasts and eliminate the war. You will chase the enemies and defeat them five ways for this is not it. Perfect. Here it is. Thank you. Listen, it says, speak to the Lord. Leviticus 26. Speak to the Lord. This is it. This is it. Thank you. Leviticus 26, 9 and 10. I will look favorably upon you, making you fertile, fertile and multiplying your people. I will fulfill my covenant with you. Listen to this. You will have a surplus of crops that you will need to clear out the old grain to make room for the new harvest. <clears throat> I'm telling you, this is a season in which God is saying, through the end of the year, I'm going to begin to bless you, that you're going to have to begin to move things out because of the surplus that's coming in 2025. I want to let you know that this is the sign of the Holy Spirit coming upon your house. A brand new day is being released into the house of the Way World Outreach. It's a year of supernatural provision. It's the year of surplus. It's the year of expansion, the year of greater things. Come on, if you receive it, Say yes. Hallelujah. This young lady in the white, when I looked at you, I heard the Lord say, he says, let your heart not be troubled and let your heart not be consumed with worry. He said, trust me, the spirit is moving. Though you may not feel changes happening, it's at work. Joshua chapter 6, the Israel army was marching around the walls. They didn't hear it cracking. They didn't feel it shaking. They saw nothing other than what God said. But can I tell you what happened? When God was not working outside, he was working inside. And because he was working inside, a woman by the name of Rahab and her family were being delivered. When they were fully set free through the scarlet thread through an open window, can I tell you what happened? Their family was radically saved. Then the wall fell and the nation possess the land. God says, just because you don't feel it, just because you don't see it, don't mean I'm not manifesting. I am doing something on the other side of the wall that's going to bring your family into a greater place. Know that I will cause your house to possess the land. Come on, if you believe it, say yes. My friend, Triple OG, I heard the Spirit of God say to tell you that this is your Genesis 49, 22 moment. He says, you are a Joseph and you will be planted 
You are a tree of righteousness and you will be planted by a wellspring of life and your branches will grow over the wall. The Lord says this is the season in which that in which I placed in you will not be limited and it will not be constrained or restrained. Even when things come to press against your house seemingly like causing conflict, the Lord says you and your house will grow up and over it. You will not be stifled nor will you be limited. I will give you a voice that's even greater than you imagine and the word of the Lord will begin to drip like honey and you will inspire men and families to be reunited. God says get ready because I'm going to open doors and you're going to share the power of family with the people and as you share it you will make them fruitful vines according to the word of the Lord. You will see families of friends be healed, delivered and set free. You will see uh, clients whose families are in despair and hardship suddenly become fruitful because you'll speak a word in truth and with love and that love will set them free for I am with you says the spirit of God come on someone say yes that young man that just raised his hand right there <clears throat> can I pray for you what's your name Riley pleasure to meet you this is what I heard the spirit of God say he said I will make your tongue like honey when you open your mouth, it will drip and it will cause the countenance of men to be brightened. It will be spoken to your generation. Some of it will come out in forms of music. There is an atmosphere that surrounds you that's full of music. It's full of sounds. You're a creator of, of sounds and beats and stuff like that. I hear God saying, out of you will come a rhythm and a sound that will begin to touch a generation and it will cause their countenance to look up and the brightness of God will come, fill their heart and change their life. God says get ready I'm going to put lyrics and words on the inside of your mouth you're going to begin to write and compose at first you thought it was just you but you recognize now it's the Holy Spirit in you doing a new thing trust me says the Lord and great things will come forth from your mouth out of your spirit that will bless a generation for I am with you says the Spirit of God come on how many of you know we need words of heaven to touch and impact our city our state our nation nation and a generation hallelujah pastor Christian I heard the spirit of God say Genesis 49 5 will be a scripture that you will find rest in and the Bible says from one generation to another they shall praise and demonstrate the mighty acts of God. The Lord says, there is coming a generation that will begin to do greater exploits because you will empower them. The Lord says, it's in your heart and in the vision of this house to empower the next generation for great and mighty things. The Spirit of God says, get ready because it seems like in this season, many things in your life have been drawn back. But the Lord says, for an arrow to be launched with power and authority, it has to be taken back. I heard the Lord say, my hand is about to open, and when I release it, suddenly the things that you've been contending for but not breaking through will be open, and suddenly it will be there. It will no longer be a day of delay or hindrance, but it will be suddenly it's upon you, and you're living out and doing what you have been trying to accomplish over the last year. It will suddenly be done. God says, supernaturally, things are being put in motion and they will not be denied for I have anointed you for this purpose this is the season that you understand that you are an arrow chosen from my quiver for such a day and an hour such as this to bring life to a generation and a people rejoice for the day of breakthrough has come to you and your household come on if you believe it say yes yeah. hallelujah come on someone say yes Hallelujah. You can just sense the goodness of God. Just hold up your hands. I'm going to say one last prayer because I want to be sensitive to time. Holy Spirit, I pray over every man and woman of this house that you are the Lord, not only of their breakthrough, but you are the spirit of their advantage. Everything is turning as of this day on their behalf that you're feeling and sensing and they will know the way of the Lord that will lead them into the place of victory for trouble for trouble and hardship will end up in a favorable place 
You are moving them like you did Samson to the advantageous position that the greatest of victories will be made manifest. I thank you that the hardship is being turned around and the glory of God is being made known and revealed. I pray over this house that every man, woman, and child, every family, those here and those yet to come, would come under the radical transformation of the Holy Spirit. That they would recognize and fully comprehend that they as believers have the greatest advantage. I pray health over sick bodies. I pray clarity to minds that are overwhelmed and full of chaos. And I pray that the peace of God would be their portion. I heard the Spirit of God say, look up, your redemption draws nigh. The day of trouble and struggle has ended and the day of victory has come. Let it settle in your heart. The sorrow and the despair that you had in one season will become laughter and joy in the next. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Rejoice for a new day has come. Come on, if you believe it, say yes. Come on, how many were blessed by that word today? Come on, let's really show our appreciation. Can we give Prophet Rob a round of applause, just some thanks and gratitude? Can we give God some praise for the word we received today? Let's give our Lord some praise. Church, this, come, this Wednesday, we're going to continue this Holy Spirit series. And on Wednesday nights, is really, we leave more room for the, for the move of God to happen. People are getting healed and baptized. And on Sunday, this upcoming Sunday, pa Pastor Marco is going to bring a word and close out this series. Next Sunday, you're don't, not going to want to miss it. If you have not taken Holy Warriors, those that came up here and you gave your life to the Lord today, sign up for Holy Warriors. That's your next step. Tuesday and Sunday, that's when the classes are. We love you so much, church. We are so grateful that you came today. And we, want to, we pray that God blesses you this week. Have a wonderful week. Remember, if God is for you. There's no one who can come against you. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday. God bless. Have a great day.